talking about. So without any further ado, I appreciate all your folks uh, coming down here tonight, and uh, well, let's get on with it. Mr. Mark Hornby. Uh, is uh, being exploited 
nurtured for further uh, exploitation aims. Uh, carefully planted legal loopholes are being used to usurp the government, etc., etc. And then right over here we have, oh, that's right, the last paragraph, page 61. Microchips will be implanted in every newborn child enabling the government to track each move by a new generation of citizens. Americans will live in slavery unless we're poor folks. Da, 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 da. Well, I was just fascinated because, you know, if you can't beat them, you kind of, well, as we say, if you can't stop a punch, you deflect a punch. So for those of you who don't enjoy this picture in Time Magazine, with the microchip on the ear, uh, which, of course, is the uh, kind of a slap in the face, much as this particular piece, I know this is hard for radio, but I want to do this. Most people who remember the article that was done with me in Time Magazine might recall that there was a little bit of a work that was done here intentionally also, kind of like this article two years later. Well, they told you we're all crazy. I read the piece in the article, right, about microchipping, critters, people, etc. And what was the very next advertisement that was done? Uh, a microchip Fluffy, so you'll know where Fluffy is when the time comes. Okay? We're all crazy about the next big advertiser, which, by the way, was New Home Again, a critical link between lost and found. And you might also put comma and tyranny. <laughs> well, isn't it interesting how things have changed? Now, this article is worth reading because, of course, well, it talks about the fact that, sure, you're going into a police state, but most of the trains will kind of run on time, won't they? Well, of course you're going to a police state, but it won't be so bad. After all, the government won't make any more mistakes than your banks do. Oh, that's right. When you have the debit card instead of currency, the government will make no greater number of mistakes than the banks will. Of course, when the bank makes a mistake, as we all know, what happens? You are at fault, not the bank. Now, I've had a lot of young students today. I had a lot of fun today. It's funny how you have ups and downs when you, when you work in places like we do, and I work for you then. And one of the interesting things I had to have happen today was to sit down for just a minute, and a couple of young students were just back for college, started to strike up a conversation. We were going back and forth, and one thing led to another, which led to talking about government and the problems in government and where things are going and where school's going and how school's not teaching about government, which then led into the chip and the microchip and, of course, also the national ID card. And I asked the two young gentlemen that were there, which then became three, which then became five, which then became seven, do you all have this M card? And the one that goes, oh, yes, I have it right here. And he reaches in the clock and pulls it. I said, well, that is the national ID card. Well, well, it has a chip. No, I said it has a, as I pointed out, as we said many years ago in this very room, it is a microprocessor now. It has seven separate chip assemblies. It is a massive amount of data. You can only access three of them. He goes, oh, I said, well, well, well it's not that, that complete, is it? I said, well, you should check your school records and your school rules. Right now at the University of Michigan, it is stated that you will not be able to access your grades or your school papers if you do not accept them. National ID card, which also means that your face will be data screened, in other words, digitized and put in the national database. Two years ago, two years ago, which is not just, just a short time after the Oklahoma bombing, as a matter of fact, which is a benchmark at the time, the Senate was openly discussing the fact that over 54 million Americans, through guile and deceit and deception and contract, have already been scanned and put into the federal system. Now think about that. 54 million people means out of 256, 275, we won't call all the illegal aliens, okay? <laughs> but out of them, we know that at least now one fifth of the population in one form or another has been digitized and is presently that image is under the control of a government agency. But who else accesses it? Well, five years ago, when we first brought this up, Hall, remember, absolute uncategorical denial that a national ID card even existed. Why? To buy time. In reality now, we've seen many different aspects, aspects of this. You might recall that we've brought this up on our program. We've also brought this to people around the country. We brought it back to another part of the country. Is the fact that the national health care card is already in motion. Despite what has been said, the program is being attached in many different forms, several different tiers simultaneously brought together as we described in the past. The national health care card was first being implemented of all places. What a surprise, California. <coughs> not only in California, but other parts or regions of the country, but in Paso Robles County, which is where the National ID card was given to us, the health care card, 
you will not receive service, and we all know what servicing means in the cattle industry, right? <laughs> being serviced in the cattle industry is not like being serviced at your gas station, okay? Well, when the government says they're going to service you, I don't think they mean the gas station version either. I think they mean the cattle industry <laughs> And what unfortunately happens is a situation where without the car, you will not receive health care service. Well, if it's the government kind of service we see from the IRS, the ATF, the FBI, I don't think I want that kind anyway. And I think that's pretty well the attitude of everybody sitting here tonight. Well, what's unfortunately happened is they've stated uncategorically you will have the card there. We already received a sample from a health care worker who was in Paso Robles County at the time. I appreciate it because it's just like the M card. It's just like the Mark card for the military. It's the same silver chip. It's a multi a multi processor and or gold correction, not silver. Very good, they're right. Be very technical. The whole point being that uh, this card was going to be implemented first at the county level, at the multi-county level, then the whole state. And Paso Robles is one of the many pilot counties. Now we've seen this many times with all the other aspects and all the other things that were going on that were described in this very room about five years ago. Example, this is one of the first places where we talked about car confiscations. Now, more publicity was brought to this, but for many people who are listening, right now around the United States, Cars, car confiscation off the street is a reality. It's what's happening around the country right now. It is being discussed or it is being implemented. New York, New Jersey, many of the colonial states, California. This is a big issue again. But they had to wait. They had to go hold down. We say, if you're in a tank, you know, if you're in tank country, and you're in those fighting other tanks, you don't stand on a flat piece of real estate and wait to get your butt shut off. You roll with the train, you find an area where you can drop the hole down where it's out of sight, out of mind, you keep the turret where it can do some damage, you fire on the target, you need to pull your tank back so it's even less of a target by not being exposed at all. That's exactly the kind of battlefield you're dealing with with legislation. As we have effectively fought the enemy, as we have effectively engaged the enemy, which most people forget, we have been very effective. We have exposed the actions that have taken place in the of that. The other side has been forced to stop and hold down. Notice I didn't say back up. And I want to stress this because this is very, very important to our entire discussion tonight. The other side, from the ATF, the FBI, to the IRS, to whoever, are making a great effort to continue where they left off. They will stop at a certain point, wait to see when the smoke clears, if everything's safe to start moving again, if they've dumbed down the population, if they've keyed in the controlled media, if they plug in the proper propaganda so that they can continue with the action by notifying the opposition. How many times have we seen this? Example is, again, the ATM. After the Waco, Waco attacks, the Waco assault took place, and by the way, I heard something on the local radio stations at all. You don't think that the ATF planned that raid on Waco, do you? Uh, excuse me, hello, hello. Well, it's interesting to note that, yes, they did plan it. In fact, just as a bench note for all the people listening, many farm workers listen here on the Public Radio International. The ATF and FBI planned that exercise six months in advance, had a mock up, a full scale mock up of the Davidian Church and home. Went through the action illegally with military forces, including JTF 6 coordinated with foreign military assets, executed the action, failed, failed, mind you, even with all of this planning, and I'll get into that in a minute, why they failed, and then turned around and had to try and cover their act up. And of course, we all know how they finally covered it up with flame and, and flame and destruction. There is a new movie that is out. I've mentioned this many times, and I'll mention this every chance I get. It's called Waco Rules of Engagement. You have an organization here. We need to bring this movie. I notice we've got projectors up there. I almost guarantee you can get it. You need to play this thing as many times as you can. Uh, our friends and patriots that are in California listening tonight called the moment they played it in San Francisco. Now remember, San Francisco is like Ann Arbor. In fact, we call Ann Arbor Little San Francisco. It's a very little town, right? Yeah, right. Okay. When everybody came out of the theaters, they were all in tears. The people who came in with a pre you know, pre-assumption of what they were going to see refused to leave in the first hour of the first showing. They all wanted to sit through and watch it a second time, and there were lines to get in. The reason is that this has all the footage, and it catches the government agencies and the press especially in their lives. 
Now, 60 minutes, of course, we know what kind of icons of truth they are, right? Okay. Well, of course, interesting point is that in this film, the authors catch 60 minutes and ambush them for a change. And they pin them down, and they ask them about the footage that they have, which, well, by the way, that all the original government footage was subpoenaed for the trial, which is why you did not see the Davidian trial on national television. We saw O.J. Simpson for almost two years, <laughs> right? We were the trial, we seen O.J. Simpson, but, and only two people were killed there, by the way, but a place where we saw people murdered on national television did not get a single bit of coverage, not a single cable station coverage. There's a good reason why. Because it showed all of the facts of what really transpired at Waco. Now, it's 1997, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking at October of 1997 rolling around here. We're only a few weeks away again. It doesn't seem that like, like that's possible. We're looking at three weeks and we're through this month. So we're looking at years since Waco was destroyed for finally a small glimmer of the actual factual evidence to come out. Now, are you trying to tell me that on ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN, that all these networks couldn't see that it would be viable and monetarily desirable to do a realistic or a real report, a report on what actually transpired at Waco? Well, of course not. You saw what ABC did. Waco, the final word, and they used selective footage from the clear footage done from overhead. They chop and hack all of the convenient audio tapes that were done from all the microphones planted in the walls. You know, the Davidians were so evil and terrible that they let these people wander up the building on a regular basis and fiddle, fiddle with the windows and mess with the walls and let them walk away without shooting them. That's how evil and sadistic the Davidians were, don't you know? Now, uh, case in point, and I've got to stress this because I make no bones about it, that I, I support the militia, help to make the militia, I think, help to build us to where we are today in many different forms. And one of the things I have to stress is we have to be prepared to defend ourselves. But let me let me bring something up. Everybody's worried about, oh, it's fuel and resist like the board. It's fuel and resist, you will be absorbed. They're so horrible, they have such wonder to it. <laughs> 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 you know, give me another phaser, we'll see if this one works. Okay? I'm not worried about whether or not it's going on against fuel and resist. I just want to find something that'll kill the one. In this case with the Davidians, imagine that this is just like a Wild West scenario or an image of the, of the barbarians in, in engaging in civilization on the very fringe where the two can collide. What you saw was a, was a government agency planning to attack a group of people on their worship day. They specifically chose their day that they would be in church. They waited and knew that many of the men of fighting age would be away from the home, working either in the fields or going to their personal jobs. <coughs> If they were making an attempt to arrest David Koresh, one of the problems I have there is David Koresh had a home in Waco, Texas, and jogged every day on a regular basis that could be timed like clockwork. So the excuse that they originally tried to give in both the, excuse me, the nonsense story that they tried to sell does not connect with the actual facts that they eventually recruited and collected. However, in Waco rules of engagement, which you must get, we will be the contact members, John can access them through the office, Give us a ring over the public radio. All of the footage that is missing from all of the ABC and NBC tapes was included. The flare footage clearly shows them shooting the people at the back of the church when they tried to escape. They tried to escape. You can be seen, you can identify the individuals, you can see they're obviously children as opposed to men and women, and they are stacked like those piles of cordwood near the doors where they shoot three or four of them at a time where they try to escape back in. People cried when they left this movie because there is no doubt, it is not a fiction movie, it's not fabricated. Where they got all the information from was out of the court record and everything was subpoenaed to the Freedom of Information Act. But here's something I'm not sure that they stressed even in this movie. Were the Americans that were flying the aircraft that took these pictures? Do you know that they, they were not? Does everybody understand that British operational personnel, British military personnel were flying the aircraft and that, 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 that particular uh, site of Waco? Now, an interesting thing, if you watch the, if you watch the list of the BBC or if you watch British uh, television, you would know this because they were bragging about it because they sent these, these pieces of equipment to the United States to be used there. Now, another interesting thing, and people have seen this and people complain about the different videos, but the fact of the matter is, it is demonstrated in the London press that Russian personnel were on site from psychological warfare units to use technology on the Davidians during that 51-day siege. 
That is documented. That can be demonstrated. It is reported by the controlled press even, but overseas where we don't get to see it. An interesting point in the difference to differentiate between the two mechanisms, the foreign press as opposed to ours. The foreign press isn't any freer, it's just that they like to rub it American way. When you look at, at all the United Nations operations overseas, here in America they're always called NATO operations. Right now we're in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Right now we're right in the middle of the fight. We're getting our, we're going to probably get our people shot if we're not careful again. Most likely they have been, we're just not being told about it. Remember, they control the press better now, and the press has been told what to say. But an interesting point is if you look at the developments and how they work this whole program out, how they plug it in and put it together, whenever you see it overseas, we'll watch the satellite feeds. This program is presently being generated on a satellite feed. If you watch your satellite page and you listen to the Canadians, you listen to Mexico, you listen to, to uh, Europe, you listen to Africa, you watch the Asian stations, do you know what they call it in Bosnia? They call it a United Nations operation. The only place where they call it a NATO exercise is here. To dumb down the supposed free people of America. Now, it's like what happened, I don't this in because this is like what happened when Iraq invaded Kuwait. Should be noted. What was the most important story? Yeah, I always like this one. The most important story, the way you can tell when something's going on in the world. What was the most important story for two going on three days when Kuwait was invaded? Zha Zha Gabor slaps a cop. It was on headline news. It was the first story of the day. It was the front, the front page of Detroit Sleeves Press's news. Okay? Now, what's wrong with this picture? We've got a major, we've got a big one that's obviously going to escalate into a major action. And again, watch this hand, watch this hand, and ignore where this one's grabbing. <laughs> and when it's done, it won't be going anywhere anyway. The point being that, that again, this is the example of how the, the press is controlled. One of the points being, and I noticed the mention about the babies here, that is important because we've been told that we're so smart nowadays, we can never catch on to the fault. We can never be fooled by propaganda. And I knew as soon as I started hearing that the press is fooled <laughs> Then you better start grabbing your hind end and getting ready to pay attention to something that's going to happen. Sure enough, the way that was invaded. And these stories started showing up about oh, the Iraqi atrocities to the Kuwaiti people. And everybody was told, well, you can't ridicule that story. Don't ridicule those stories. You can't argue with them. Turns out it was a propaganda story out of New York that fabricated the entire thing. And the little girl they showed on television was the daughter to the ambassador to Kuwait here in the United States. She wasn't in Kuwait when anything happened. It was a total fiction and fabrication. The story about the babies being ripped from the incubators so they could take the incubators back to Iraq, it didn't even happen. It didn't exist. It didn't take place. But again, we're, we're, we've been told we're so smart. Remember, that company, we're so smart. We would never be fooled by anything like that. And here, have a crack. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. That's how they've been treated. So what we have now is a situation where, for a change, we have all the tools. It's a different story from even five years ago or four years ago, <coughs> where because we have become more refined, we have we have we are now being inundated from another source, or what is now being called the alternative source. In reality, I think all of you can agree it's the actual, it's a real report, it's the actual source. Uh, I challenge everybody, and I did this today again. I told these young men that I was talking to, I said, I'll tell you what, have some fun with your VCR. It's the first of the year. You can even probably use this for one of your classes if you event. Take your VCR and set it at the top of the hour and then 10 minutes after and then reset it for the bottom of the hour and 10 minutes after that. And do that for 10 hours straight and walk away. Don't watch it. Just walk away. At the end of the day, come back, pull the tape out, reset the machine, plug the tape back in, and now sit down and watch it. What you will see is a classic example of controlled propaganda. A story which will start at 6 in the morning and how it will be morphed by 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock. The images will be changed, if not altered. The words will be changed because the, the um, social engineers that are managing CNN will tell them, no, 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 you're not supposed to use this word. We, 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 you use these words they instead decide. at this point. We want to vilify this person in a certain way. We want to attack this person in another way. Now, let me give you the best example of that in more recent times. Does anybody remember the first few hours when the Gideons were attacked in their church and home? 
I do, and I have it on videotape when they showed on ABC a picture of the whole congregation in a room like this center area here where all the people were together. And the words that were spoken were, the suspected white supremacist group in Waco, Texas, and right at the front were seven black people, and there were two other uh, Asian people. <laughs> black black. That congregation was black. But what they were counting on was a test to see how dumb down there. Well, you know, we won't ask any questions. Well, who the heck was in that picture? Well, that was the strange white supremacist I've ever seen. <laughs> you see what I mean? How that works or how it doesn't plug in, but they try it. The fact of the matter is, and to demonstrate how arrogant you are, they tried to plug that in. And even with the picture in front of us, and in, in, in our very feet, as if this is all we were going to do with it. Well, of course, in some cases it is. It's a combination of the direction and some level of sensory input here the audio. But uh, a little thing like the videotape, the audio tape, and printed matter still are excellent supplemental or, or survival tools to make sure that we get our points across. Yes. Now, there's one problem that I do have with what I have seen in the past and even what I'm seeing now is, is, is ridicule after the fact. Most everything that was done by everybody in the Patriot movement is not perfect, per se. Or, more importantly, here's what happens. As we release information, the other side realizes that he's going to be bearing our particular target so they will dance sideways, they will shift left to right. The minor details that are usually debated over nowadays are not relevant. A good example of what we were talking about right here, again, in front of us, the discussion here in this article uh, in Time Magazine, and then the advertisement on the very next page. And yet, we will be so concerned about trying to counter some of the nonsense generated by our opposition, which wastes resources and time. Instead, there is a basic rule that American generals learned a long time ago. Attack, 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 attack. And the other side knows that very well. Make no mistake about it. What did I say earlier? One of the points being made. The ATF has never backed down. I can show you videotapes of the sessions in the Senate where, they, where the ATF was brought before them for abuses, for shooting a man in his home that was unarmed, or beating a woman in her own home with a warrant that was improper and the end was through suspicion that was, was unfounded. Were these 1997 tapes? 1995? Oh, perhaps 1990. No, these are tapes from the Senate hearings from 1981 and 82. Not anything <coughs> has changed, except that the abuses have become more excessive. What I'm fascinated by now is our opposition is trying this on this program is on 103.5 FM, locally in Detroit today. When, they, when this character, who looks sound like he's working closely with a lot of other operations that are anti-American, started commenting on things like uh, Ruby Ridge and Waco, it was like, oh, well, yeah, those are bad, those are bad, and oh, I know they're bad, but Lord, we're still waiting for someone to go to court, like he's sitting there with a watcher and watch and waiting for the train to show up. And he'll be waiting there a long time because he thinks it's going to happen. The best example of this is, even when we finally did get one person one whole person is being brought to trial, and that's, one, that's the sniper, Ruby Ridge. When he was picked up, he's being charged with basically what is manslaughter, or what in reality was murder, okay? In return, as, re as a retaliation act, Kevin Harris, who was already tried and found innocent, was then picked up by the Fed and has been charged with first-degree murder. Yes, and double jeopardy is the first thing that comes to mind. But remember, they're not honoring it. This is one thing I've said for a long time. I think mean, it's hard for us to understand. In many cases, as need be, they are not honoring our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and our Declaration of That is the pivot here. We know why we will have to fight. And we understand why we have to exhaust all measures in the process before we get to that point. So the only thing that we have to remember is that we may not get, we may not, and will not probably get a chance to choose where that fight takes place. <coughs> now, I, I have to say something, because when we were at Justice Process last night, no, two, two visits ago, we had a gentleman who was getting ready to go to jail. And the only thing that I, and I don't know if he did, but I believe he did. Now, the problem I have is this. Our enemy is not playing with any rules, per se. If we have a man who is as articulate as many of the good men that we have here in Justice Pro State tonight, and we let our enemy continue to pick at us and drag our people into shackles and into sub 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 submission and servitude, then eventually there will be nobody left standing on this side of the wall to do battle. 
And if they have their way, the attrition in time they will do just that. We are at a point, and have been at a point for quite some time, where we must protect those assets. That is the balance of, of the use of persons just as closely in the concept of litigation, the Constitution itself, the ballot box, and the other elements of the Constitution of the state we have for militia there for a reason. If we are not capable, and if we are not willing to physically protect ourselves when we are abused, then our enemy will not take us seriously. And in many cases, they don't take us seriously right now. They will exhaust our resources, eat out our substance, take us to foreign lands to be tried for pretended offenses. Do you recognize the grievances I'm listing? <coughs> from the Declaration of Independence. The same battle that I have seen fought for the last several years is the battle that our, our forefathers fought 220 years ago. Little comment was made out of the assumption that somehow the militia or the patriot movement is ignorant of their roots. I understand why Christians got involved in the fight from, 18, from 1765, 66, through to the American Revolution and obviously through to its end. That's a, that's a given. We know that it was a combination of attack on our freedom of religion, on the attack on, the attack on our, our individual sovereignty, the attack upon our personal property that caused us to revolt, to rebel, to resist. We are at that same point today. We are to a certain degree in denial because comfort dictates that if at all possible we'd like to stretch this out. But in reality, at what point we consider it acceptable to take a man who's 70 or 80 years old and put him in jail because he's deemed to be a threat to the state because he's knowledgeable of how the state functions. <laughs> That's really what most of these people are being yes. jailed for. Because they are as competent, and in fact, I will, I will take that back, it would be an insult because the other side is not competent. It is because of their, their high competency above and beyond the capability of your enemy who sits in government that these people are being in prison. The whole gist of this is like the IRS code. The IRS, the average IRS agent or employee has got no more than a couple years of college. And yet the average IRS code is written at what? The 29th and 34th grade level. That's why they can't give you an answer. Nobody can give you an answer. It's that simple. If you call up one IRS agent and talk to him, the reason he's going to give you some nonsense, it seems like nonsense, is because for the best of his ability, and because of his lack of knowledge, he's going to give you the response that he's conditioned with. And this is a great protection measure for them, for plausible deniability, which is what government today is all about, so they can maintain a confusion level, so they can exhaust us in a little rat wheel. While we're really doing this, they're proceeding with a wheel and a, and a machine that's actually attached to something that is taking ground. You see the problem? Now that's where we have to be balanced. I would say this to any militia man as I have for as long as I've ever been involved in anything like this, long before we used the term militia. You must be well-rounded. You must be as confident as possible in the Constitution and Declaration of the Bill of Rights as you are with the use of your M14, your M16, A1, or A2, your AK-47, your SKS, whatever it is. You must understand what it is you want to play. And you must also be able to verbally express and, and address on that other, that higher battlefield at different times. That's hard for a lot of people to accept. And yes, there are special jobs for everybody. Some men and women are better at them than, than, than most of us. And we need to support those shining stars. That's really what Justice Pro Se is supposed to do. That's what most people seem to forget. It is a training campaign. Its mission is to bring people up mutually to support each other so that they might gain from each other's experience, so they might go on to teach more people. And a whole cadre, a new school is taught yet again. And that group replaces yet another, and yet another. And that's what this whole country is based upon. I've learned so much, and I cannot, from, from where we stood right there, only a few feet away, because I know the difference where the podium was, I can tell right now. I've learned so much just in the last five years that I, have, I can say beyond a doubt that I am so much richer a person for all of the experience and all of the good men and women that I've met. That in a way, I thank God the hostility, that hostility didn't break out because I would have missed that time so that I, I understand better now why it is I must fight. Why it is we must be willing to defend ourselves. And it's so hard because for me, I, I, I don't know, I can't explain it here for you personally the way it would make any sense. When I leave a person, like, like all the friends that I see here, for me, the time between our visits doesn't exist. 
I don't know how it is with you, but for me, you're you're all family. It's hard to explain because I've said met so many, but I see so many that are so alike. There's people listening tonight that are sitting in California right now, that are in Concord, California, and I guarantee that the, every person in this room could relate to them, and vice versa. But they're half a country away, <clears throat> and they're not like most of the rest of the population that's out there. They're not like most of the dumb down people, or I should say, unfortunately, he's asleep. They should have been dumb down. And here's the sad part: all of them are just as capable as all of you here. First, they're in denial because it is outside the comfort zone to accept the idea that you have responsibility for this country. Second, to a certain degree, you have something that is blatantly lazy, as all human beings are. If you don't think so, then ask yourself why you went from hand-operated and man-operated to finding out how to make something else do it for us. There's a reason for that. We get tired of doing it ourselves. It's simple. In other words, we'll find another solution. But in this case, we can't be lazy. Even though our body father's new full wealth was going to take place, it is scary. I, every time I read this, and I've worn out this front cover. I've got a poster about this now. Because this was supposed to be the indestructible cover, but I'm wearing it off. It's traveled a half million miles already since I received this down in Indianapolis. But this document, this thing, this carries beyond all flesh and beyond all the other time, the other, the other times we have to worry about. Because it was generated by people who I think, in a very fashion, understood the concept of time and how we should look at it. It's not me, myself, and I. Many things are. We have a right to our time, and our time should be properly reflected with our private property as ours and ours alone. But in the same breath, they understood that that responsibility is a connective tissue that is bonding between all of us. It's scary sometimes. I can picture, I can picture just as plain as I'm standing here, what it would be like to be at Valley Forge. Or what it would be like to be in the middle of a, and excuse me, I think we can say even on radio, we'll call it a uh, pissing contest in the Congress or in the House. I can picture that 220 years ago and know that just as surely as 220 years ago, these men were at each other's throats sometimes, as I've seen with the Patriot Group, but I've also seen with Americans in general, they still, they did something that not everybody in the Patriot Group has figured out yet. The enemy will always try to divide and conquer you. And you have to understand that beyond the petty debates about how to doubt the eyes and how to, and how to, where to put the commas, we have a common goal, which is liberty and freedom. We have no choice but to stay on the path. We have no choice. We cannot divert. We will not change that course. And despite what it costs or takes, we will accomplish our goals accordingly. Once you have that mindset, once you lock into the target and don't deviate, remember that old Star Wars? Remember the guys, the first guys? Everybody always loves the movie Star Wars. It just came out again. John always hates it when I refer to it. But everybody remember something? There's a, there's a set of guys everybody seems to forget. It's the first bunch that went into attack the Death Star that went into the trench. Because they all know that they're not going to die. But they did it anyway. In history, we've seen this time and again because the greater cause at that particular point in time meant that we had to make, we had to spend our lives perhaps as part of the greater pain. Well, I can accept that. That's not martyrdom. That's not, it's just the idea of common sense is what anybody who values the Constitution of Bill of Rights has to be willing to accept in order for it to survive. And the more of us that do it, the more likely none of us will have to pay with our lives in proportion. We do not, and in fact, our enemy. Is great. It's fear, fears this most of all, that every one of us leaving here goes out and teaches somebody, that they teach somebody else. And there are so many of us that nobody will follow their blasted orders. That's what they're scared to death of. I've tried to explain this to militia people, the concept of discipline. Certainly we have numbers, but it's discipline. It is the demonstrating capability to sit down, put this between the ears, and keep it working for you, and use it on them, that terrifies them the most. It is the discipline to, to stand together in spite of diversity, in spite of in, in adverse diversity. Why <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a slip from the U.N.M. You know that? I slap you any time I do things like this. <laughs> well, I'll say things. I'm going to get something else here in a minute. But adversity is something that we seem to, we, it's, it's like it's easy when we're coasting along. It's, and of course, that's always true. But we have already weathered, as a patriot, as the patriot movement, things that most people could not even have comprehended before their experience. <coughs> and that most people claim that they probably took place we wouldn't be able to stand. The Oklahoma bombing is a benchmark. It was a completely contrived and fabricated event. 
Its purpose was to attack the patriot movement. Its second purpose, actually its primary purpose, was first to change the meaning of April 19th. Originally, that was also always known as Patriot's Day. After Waco, it definitely had a meaning as Patriot's Day because we promised we would never see anything like that happen again in this nation. And there's not a man that I've met who said that who doesn't still believe that. It's just that it's, it's not as hot right now because it's not in front of them. Time, is, as, always, as it said, always heals wounds. Heals all wounds. Well, now we've come full circle. We're looking at these, these events being churned back up and being used against us. Oklahoma's other mission, of course, was to attack the Patriot movement. If you don't think so, the gentleman here got some of the stuff that uh, we need to use, and why are we sitting down and taking the time? I have to do this. Is there were virtually tens and tens of hours, hundreds of hours of satellite feeds that none of you ever saw that were sent out to the networks in advance or to be used over a, a series of days, which were fabricated stories to be released in one minute, two minute, three minute bursts. They were pre canned events. But because of how we made contact and how some people over the paper can return, dug their heels in, and kick back, we were not, not only did we not have to retreat, we held ground and even took ground back from you. If the whole of the paper movement had to duck and roll, I won't say hold, but a lot of people had decided to uh, again, hold down or, or we're all oh, got to dodge, if everybody had turned and bit back, not only would they have lost ground, we would be able to catch them in the act. As it is, we caught them badly. It's been two years since Oklahoma. We are still here. We've had casualties. We've had other problems, and I will address that over, over the, the evening. But it's interesting to note that when you look at the actual numbers, first of all, we're in the tens of millions. That for the number of casualties we've had, which can be measured less than, say, 60, as far as individuals with public events that have taken place, that we've fared fairly well, and we've learned from each one of the actions great lessons. So we've been tuning our machine while the opposition's been tuning theirs. Now, with regard to that, and again, this is a good example, I just got this, the good old University of Michigan, where I work, just had the Global Citizenship Program, uh, let's see, I'll make sure I get the name right here, uh, Leadership Development through the Business School, uh, developing the business leaders of the future, uh, the global business leaders of the future, mostly from outside of the United States. The sponsors you might recognize. This is again, typical of your aggressor. And when I say this, if I use military terms, it's because this is a war. Uh, the court, my favorite, and I, I thank the person who gave this to me. You know the basic rules of the, of the courtroom. First of all, the, the, the courtroom is the battlefield. The judge is your enemy. The prosecutor, an enemy general. And your lawyer, an enemy spot. <laughs> Ameritech Corporation. Remember, does anybody remember my favorite Ameritech ad when we were here last time, many years ago? There was a little Ameritech ad that they had where the guy's got this headset. It's a real modern scene with a big uh, plate glass window up on the skyscraper looking out into the skyscape in the background. And these guys are looking at these controls and they're adjusting knobs and you hear this voice on the phone. And then they go to a dinner party where this guy is sitting at the dinner table, he's in a tux, and here, a phone for you, Mr. Dukas. And the guy, of course, will thank you, and he takes the phone, he picks it up, and meanwhile, says, and, and the overview is, even while you're using the phone, AT&T is listening in to improve the quality of your yeah. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> I'm sure they're listening in for a lot of other reasons. After all, the biggest spy network on the planet. Everybody uses the phones, and every business does. If you want to invest in stocks, wouldn't you? Boy, of course you <laughs> So first we've got Ameritech. Now, Anderson Consult Consulting Strategic Services. This is an oddball group, but I've got a little background on them. I'll cover probably later on down the road here. Ford Motor Company, Ohoko. They're just across the street from where we are right now, aren't they? Or right here. Yep, up oh, that way. That's right. I put it that way. They're that way. They're everywhere. Uh, the Procter and Gamble Company. That's right. Two stars and a crescent moon for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. That's right. That's that little horn and devil thing. Uh, Warner Lambert Company. Well, they're right here out of Michigan, too. But believe me, if you know where what Wacker Hut. Oh, I'm sorry. Wacker uh -huh. is. Uh, Wacker Hut Corp and uh, Warner Lambert 
tied in quite closely, and Warren and, of course, Wackenhut is involved in a lot of other operations that are very shady, to say the least. <laughs> Private prisons, as we all know. Oh, yeah. And last but not least, well, that's right, Whirlpool Corporation. Everything's got to be cleaned up when the mess is made. <laughs> <laughs> So these are your global <coughs> citizenship program sponsors, supporting companies. Now, I just got the entire booklet here, and it was a global, uh, uh, global New World Order fest. It took place over at Palmer Field, and fortunately, we have a lot of people whose job it is to you know, smile, act like students, get right in there where they can talk and get close and rub shoulders, you know, ooh and on, pat them on the head too, and get their information and drag it out. And that way, they get all the stuff that is used to propagandize the students. Now, I'm not going to review all of this completely. I don't think it's necessary. But again, this is the very first few days of the school year. This has already started. They're on a very hard, fast track. This year especially, we <coughs> want to get as much done as quickly as possible to initiate the globalist agenda and the global world order agenda. And that, I think, is, is again a demonstration of what's happening across the United States and also internationally. First of all, I like this. How many people noticed that Boris Yeltsin, everybody, everybody ever recalls, Boris Yeltsin just stated that they finally decided that they're going to promise that if we give them more money, they're not going to point Russian missiles at us anymore. Everybody catch that? You know what the problem with that is? Didn't Bill Clinton say in his uh, State of the Onion address two years ago that for the first time in American history, no American boys and girls have Russian warheads pointed at them. I know what happened. They told me it's only to kill the adults. Right? But you might recall three years before that that we had Mr. Well, four years. That we had Mr. Well, four years, Mr. Gorbachev, the British Republican Gorbachev, told us that his missiles weren't being pointed at us, yet they still were. Now, am I a little confused here? I was asking, you know, am I confused? Is there something wrong? Did I fall into a time warp here or something? They keep promising not to, but they still are. It's like, I won't shoot you, but I will. But it's like the ATF going into the Waco church. This is not an attack while we blame for you to death, shoot you. We're the tanks. This is not an attack. This is not an attack. It's the same routine. And you know what? If we keep doing this, where, where else have we seen this variation, this whole timeline play out before? 1984 with George Orwell. Mm -hmm. As needed, you tell them whatever it is they're supposed to hear for the moment, and then scratch, 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 change reality again. Oh, down the road, it's time to plug this one back in. Scratch, scratch, scratch. We are at war with Central Asia, and we have always been at war with Central Asia, and South Asia is our friend. We are at war with South Asia, and we have always been at war with South Asia, and Central Asia is our friend. Scratch, scratch, scratch. It's a... So I'm sure whoever the next Russian commander is, in chief, or whatever you want to call it. We have czars now, that's right. They don't, we have czars. Okay, so we have <laughs> We have all the czars. We're all good people. We have the drug czar, we've now got the education czar, we now have a new czar. By the way, there was a new czar made up. I don't know who he is. I, uh, somebody just brought something to me the other day and mentioned, oh, by the way, he's a new czar. We've got more czars than Russia ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a problem with this? <laughs> I do. First of all, I know for a fact that I am a sovereign. I am an independent sovereign in a limited republic with democratic tendencies. We have no king, we have no king and queen, we have no czar's arena, though I'm sure they would like to be. But the fact of the matter is that it's interesting, again, through the use of words, how they've conditioned us. When I was here before, one of the things I had to do, and it took me, and my, my friends all here, you guys know that I had to do this. The word compound was used in Waco, and we were so indoctrinated with it that everybody had to use it. Does anybody know what the word compound, the definition of it is in the life of the dictionary? Yeah. It does. A place where animals are kept. Yes. So do you think it's not double speak? It's not double speak or, or twist, of, twist of words that they would use that the way that they did? Not an accident at all. And for that reason, again, as soon as you see them conditioning everybody that way, they make a point of not using their terms. Now, another one that was pointed out to me, and I've got to do this, you'll notice I catch myself every once in a while. A kid is a billy goat. A kid is a baby goat who has a father as a billy goat and a mommy as a nanny goat. And we have children in America, or for that matter, all over the world. Okay? And there's a lot of double meaning there. 
keep in mind, too, that remember goats, uh, let's see, uh, devil worshiping, slash go to Mendez, slash you have kids, therefore those kids are involved with the dark side. Uh, there we go. Very simple. Word association, the way it works out. So we try to use the word children. Pay attention to your, your vocabulary, and again, whenever you see somebody, especially in the control system, using certain words, ask yourself one. That's why I like to have you do that little test with CNN. Because by doing that test, you can see which words they will re-engineer into a statement to make sure that one way or another, you are properly indoctrinated. Now, we could call CNN and confirm this, but at least I have several stories that were uh, pieces that were done stating that, for instance, on CNN, you know that they charge each one of their newscasters, uh, I think it's $50 for the use of uh, the word foreign, for instance, or other key words that they penalize, you know, social Darwinism. It's actually, it's like Pavlov's dog. Okay, wrong answer. Wrong answer. In this case, less paycheck. Less paycheck. And very quickly, the announcer learns to use all the right words. Whoop, roll over. Give him another thing. That's how it works. Now, what we have to do then, too, is reverse order. But what we're involved with, the Baker movement, is... Get involved in educating people to look for these things also, to ask questions, to read between the lines, or simply insert where the similar words have been ejected or have been extracted. I think that's really where we're going to be going, and again, we're going to be here for quite some time. We're getting close to the top of the hour. And I appreciate the fact that our listeners have been patient. This is kind of a different way that we've done the program where we're doing it live. If you can help us, or if you ask how vision can help us, one of the best things you can do, many of our listeners have already done this, is money. <laughs> well, first of all, we're about as non-profit as you're going to get, trust me. Uh, and we're not, we're, we're not a 501c3, we're not, a, we're not involved in any uh, mechanism like that, but we are, of course, Republic Radio, and Republic Radio is basically, uh, it used to be Wolverine Productions, which was the Wolverine Truck Stop. We've improved, we have better living conditions, a nice little office, nothing fancy. But we do have the same expenses and costs we've had before. If you want to support the public radio, get the job here afterwards, those people that are listening can do the same thing, pass the phones. And we can work out some arrangements to support us there. But with regard to Republic Radio and getting the message out globally, satellite systems, one of the things that's happening tonight in the program that you've been listening to here, these people out, outside uh, the range of Detroit are listening to, is on satellite and is broadcast every night along with the rest of our network. We found first we did the radio program, things worked out okay. But we had to appease certain parties. We didn't want to do that. So then we, of course, built our own program. Then we decided, oops, we were having problems with networks, so we created our own network. So don't tell me you can't find a solution, you can't get the job done. As necessary, we made the tools. And it took a heck of a dog fight to get us to where we are right now. And we paid dearly because of that. And it has taken a great deal of effort. But if you want to do something, let people know that we're out there. Or pick us up on satellite and become a short-range FM micro-broadcasting station yourself. I'll tell you, we got about two minutes, a minute and fifteen seconds. So we're going to we're going to blast the eardrums out of the rest of the planet tonight for all the people that are here. We end the program with three sentences: God bless the Republic, death, the new world order, and we shall prevail. And I think what we're going to do here tonight is just see how many of you can repeat that with me. So we're going to start right now with me. God bless the Republic! Get back to the New World Order! We shall prevail! Is keep the original. I like to keep them whole 
so we can refer to other pieces uh, in the articles that may be in the magazine for uh, historical purposes. It's like the death of privacy piece we have here. This is two years later. It totally contradicts everything they put in here, assuming that, of course, nobody would remember. In many cases, people reading it won't. Now, for that reason, I guess, we'll go right through the hot query of things that, uh, remember, in the past were categorically denied. It's a basic rule. Absolutely deny, kind of deny, admit a little, admit a lot more, and finally admit to everything that was, to, it was somebody else told you, of course, other than their assets, uh, say, two or three years down the road. The best example is Gulf War Center. Doesn't exist. No such thing. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Oh, okay, we got a little more information. Oops. Well, it, it absolutely is not happening. By the way, the, it's, it's ha not happening so much that the CIA has its first press conference in 25 years. The only problem I had with it is they put Betty Crocker out there as a representative for the CIA. Now, that was about as contradictory as you get. I don't know if you saw this woman. She had. She looked exactly like the Betty Crocker the woman on the box. The problem is, it's the CIA. It's like, you know, Betty Carter faced with a piranha, piranha body. <laughs> you kind of wonder, why not be honest? What this guy with the pasty complexion, the black beady eyes, the shaved head, and it'd be more appropriate, and everybody accepted. They'd still know it was a lie, but it'd be more realistic. You know what I mean? But instead, as we all know, we saw how things developed with regard to the spook and kook operation there. They absolutely denied, and then three weeks later, they admitted that, oh, we just discovered something. Now, this is not 1953, this is not 1963, it's not even 1973 83, we're talking the 90s. Is this not, as you can see on television and cable every night, the information age, where everything is digitized on computer? And why was the internet put up in the first place? Oh, that's right, it was a military communications operation, and it just kind of went a little crazy in the head, and it's mushroomed out, and everybody got hold of it, so we could help pay for it. Well, all of a sudden, the CIA found that, and of course, they were the custodian of record. Some note here also. The CIA was the custodian of record for all of the documents coming out of the Gulf War. And lo and behold, miracle of miracles, all of the records for all of the combat dossiers from the chemical NCOs and officers in all those units just disappeared. All the original copies, all the backup copies. What about all the digital data? Excuse me, this was an electronic battlefield. They boasted it. Remember all propaganda during the war? Why, it was like playing a video game. The input was instantaneous, and it went on electronically to individual commands, to individual field commanders, and even to individual vehicles. Yet all of a sudden, when we want some data, so we can find out what's going on, what's happening in the theater, guess what? It's all gone. What a surprise. Well, lo and behold, it didn't really get gone right away. I'm sure they're still shredding, even as we speak. But the fact of the matter is that we do know that there is such a thing as Gulf War Syndrome. They've admitted to bits and pieces. In other words, now that they know they've been caught with their hand in the cookie jar all the way up in the armpit, you know, it's like, who me? Instead, now they're trying to figure out how to explain this thing. Okay, well, it really wasn't us, it was somebody else. It really wasn't what you think, it was something else. It really didn't happen the way you've heard. And, of course, now we, we had the first cover story, well, you know what, they destroyed all those munitions after the war. And then when they did that, they exposed a bunch of people. And, wrong story. First of all, almost every uh, man or woman that was in Desert Storm has had some effect from what might be considered the Gulf War illness. For that reason, we can obviously identify, as we did with Agent Orange, which is what he would have been to for, what, 15, going on 20 years? And when they finally did, most everybody was dying from it or dead. They hoped through attrition and time that they would not have to explain to anybody what happened. That's, as we discussed earlier, was taking place with Waco, Ruby Ridge, and even with Oklahoma. They're hoping that time will allow them to fog the situation. Another case in point is Oklahoma itself. Now, do you remember, and I've played this for many of you, many of you that have been over to the house to visit, and we have all these media schools. Uh, John, your memory, two and a half years ago. John doing number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 50, 600. And all of a sudden, the trial comes up, and everybody laughed. When I said originally, just after Oklahoma, that by the time we are done, and if a trial ever takes place, the story will not match any of the original releases because they will have to completely re-engineer it. And sure enough, what did we hear when they, when they released the initial propaganda for the Oklahoma trial in Denver? Timothy McVeigh, by himself. Timothy McVeigh, all alone. And he went to the alley, all alone. And he left the truck by himself. 
and they emphasize <laughs> Now, a little confused. And now here's what's really good. Talk about classic George Orwell 1984. They waited no more. We thought, you know, this, they always shock us sometimes. We figure, okay, they'll at least figure they've got to wait two or three weeks before we're so dumb and, and, and forget that we won't catch on to what they're doing. They did not even wait a week and a half. And all of a sudden, they were into a new story. Oh, now we have more John Doe's again. We're going to plug in. Yet the whole premise of the conviction was based on alone, by himself, alone. Now, I'm a little confused with this one again. I get confused a lot of these things. As you may notice, you, it's, with law, I was taught, of course, now we have uh, Einsteinian relative law, I guess, relativity law, where today it's one thing, tomorrow it's the next, and next week it's something else. I was taught that there's supposed to be consistency to law. And also, of course, if you are in this case, provided Timothy Bay lives past the next year, which I'll get into in just a moment here, if now they're going to change the story, does that not opt for a retrial? Because you can debate and argue and, in fact, challenge most of the facts that they tried to present in this original trial? Well, most well, certainly under normal circumstances. However, ignore all the nonsense about a series of uh, rebuttals and a series of uh, requests for retrial. Under the new omnibus crime package, once a person is sentenced to death, the, the series of rebates, the series of retrials, or the re, uh, reapplication for paper doesn't exist. And everybody seems to have forgotten this. The omnibus crime package passed. He has to die within a very short period of time, which ensures that the old adage, dead men tell no tale, sticks. You see the problem? And everybody forgets the timeline has extended. The, while the... While the um, the bombing took place two and a half years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, in that time, the laws have changed. And they're not using laws for the benchmark the date when the crime took place. They're using the new laws that are altering the very body and, and intent of the Constitution, which is in the of itself. Now, the next step, and, and of course, you know, this is really going to be interesting, is how they try to explain or replug or reintroduce all of this propaganda they did try to engineer two and a half years ago. Can they? Most of it, they're going to definitely try, simply because they spent a lot of money. They called in a lot of debts. The New World Order crowd killed a bunch of people, and probably killed a bunch of witnesses in the process later on, as can be demonstrated. Because of that, they now have to try and recoup their costs, recoup the shekels, and they also have to come on people for getting that's also true of what happened with Larry Rich, because most people don't even recall something we brought up earlier about Kevin Harris already being tried. Very few people. Even though he was actually given some national coverage. And yet, as of, as again, as an attack, in other words, to threaten the people apparently in Idaho or try and coerce them in some way, because the state of Idaho is charging Mark Ron Lucci, uh, Kevin Harris is going to be charged at the federal level. So we've got a complete contrast here, of course, one case going one way, one case going the other. I don't know, other than the fact that obviously there's politics behind the scenes that we are not seeing that demonstrate a conflict inside our government right now between the states and the Fed that most people are not even being allowed to allude to. Think about this. Why would the Fed think they had to threaten the state in some way in the first place? And who would they be threatening by attacking Kevin Harris? This demonstrates again that contrary to what you've been told in the controlled media, there are a lot of people out there at the grassroots and in government even that are willing not only to listen, but are willing to act. And that's what they're doing now. Of course, the reason they're acting is because being at the grassroots end or the user end, pressure has been put on them and they've been told, you will act the way you're supposed to by law, which they've now done. Now, will this create a whole can of, can of worms that some people don't want to open? Well, a lot of people don't want to get involved because if reality sets in here real quick and a lot of facts are going to come forward that people probably just don't want to hear. But it's like a lot of the things that happen in, the, in, in real life. I carry a little piece of something here, and I always make a point of it. Ever since it happened, with all the traveling, when we went down to Texas, I carry a piece of Waco with me everywhere I go for this reason. Okay, this chunk was given to me by a person who was there. And in fact, it, was, it came from the actual from the site where the, where the building was burned. I'd worn it off, but it was not pretty when I first got it. The other is a little cross. And it's a physical reminder. It's not a talisman. It's not a wish me. It's not something that they hold. Hopefully, Cthulhu will save me. The time comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The point is that this was this was made from the dash plate off the bus that the Indians had. It was cut off. And the guy who did this, it's like a lot of things we do. With, with a picture movement, not a lot of it's planned. 
And when we were down in Texas, the guy had made this, and he was one of the people who picked a lot of the clothing, and they found the one child that was a baby's body that was still on the site in the building after the Fed released it. They found a human foot there and other, other parts of bodies when they went to the search. Well, he took the, he wants something he can make a, a, a memento of, so he made this little cross from the dashboard of the uh, bus. It's the biggest piece of metal you can find that wasn't better crushed. And he cut it out. He gave it to me just as a, you know, like a spur of the moment thing. Oh, here, by the way, he took it off himself and he gave it to me. And I like to hang on to this because there's two, it again has dual purpose. It's a reminder of the atrocity, but it's also a reminder of the strength of our people and how we recovered from this action, how we made promises we have to keep. If we're the only person standing, if I were the only one here that was willing to do this, I would not care. Because right is right and wrong is wrong. And what happened there that everybody saw, and what we saw in Oklahoma, we have to stand against, even though it's like standing against a gale force wind, even though the storm is painful, even though we may get ill, even though we may again, we may carry the process. I don't think so. In fact, I know where I'm, uh, this is not boasting, this is something I guess, one of my jobs is when traveling around the way, the way I do around the country, it is too, to a certain degree. And each one of us has their own way of doing it is to try and bolster you people to under, you know, make understand we, we are stronger than our enemy. A handful of grandmothers and grandfathers, a bunch of children, and a few men my age, a little older, a little younger, kicked the snot out of an 80-man assault force that trained for six months to try and take a church in a home. They were not prepared. They were not equipped properly in the initial attack. They did have some warning, but not enough to do what effectively should have been done. So for all of you to say, oh, they're so powerful, and they're so powerful, no, they're not. And here's the thing. Moms and grandmas, you have a tremendous amount of power. You have children that are abroad in some cases. You have friends who have children in uniform. You affect those mothers first, and then those mothers pressure those children to do, to do the right thing and to challenge the wrong thing when it's presented. Michael knew is the best example. A little play, but a very important one, because a parent's teaching made the difference. And that man stood up. And I'll tell you, he's a man. He's not a young boy. He's not a young man. And that's a man because I know people who are colonels. I know people who are master sergeants. I know sergeant majors who do not have the intestinal fortitude that that young man had and knew what he did. Oh, my career. Oh, I'm going to lose money. Oh, my goodness. Do you realize one thing he does understand? His discharge follows him for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing that gets me about this. And this is an example of where we have failed in some ways at different times. Why are we supporting or hiring people outside of our community? Why are we sponsoring or helping some of these boatheads outside our community? Michael knew he should have no problem getting a job despite his record. Not only that, but he should be able to do well for his family, and, he should, and we should make sure of that. All of us, with our many hands, could support that one person. We have a family, the Bob Starr case, which these scumbags in the ADL, I'll tell you what, 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 what a bunch of film. They wrote this piece of about Bob Starr. We know the story behind the Bob Starr case and the, the, that took place before Atlanta, the big down in Macon, Georgia, where they tried to claim that it was a, they were doing bombs and all this other nonsense. The Fed was caught on tape planting, planting evidence. ABC, NBC, CBS, and CNN were all there in the courtroom and knew the tape existed. And the, the, the court would not allow the tape to be presented as evidence. Witnesses could be brought forward which were denied. The whole reason for it, in a way, there, here's, here's the problem. Bob Starr and the, and the other gentlemen are paying a price because they've had to stick this out, and they stuck to their guns and they're fighting in court. In a way, despite the, the, the harm that's, been, that's befallen them, they probably did us more good than anything else. Because had the scenario worked out the way it was supposed to, the government involvement with the Atlanta bombing would have triggered a series of events, and then they would have plugged in the Georgia, <coughs> Georgia situation after the bombing. What happened is that, that uh, Bob Starr went on, on shortwave radio before when, he, when they caught the Fed on the film and said, oh, you know they're trying to set us up. Here's the people that are doing it. This is their names. Here's where they are. This is how they're going to perform the act. The next day, they had to grab them because, and, and they were terrified of one thing, by the way, when they grabbed them. They wanted one thing and one thing only. They searched four or five different houses for that videotape. They didn't want guns, they didn't want powder, they didn't want uniforms, they desperately wanted that videotape. What does that tell you about the people that are in our government if it's our governments? There's the problem. And this, this story was available, all this information was available to every one of the major networks. Did you see any of this on national television? No. For obvious reasons, I think you can understand. But, here's another tie-in. 
is because of the Atlanta bombing and Flight 800 being shot down. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, having a fuel motor problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right? Shot down by the agents. Yeah. Shot down by the government. Was a government accident or a government intent? Okay, but here's the thing. Let's go over their story. Because of the Atlanta bombing, which now they say wasn't the militia, and now they're not sure who it is, and they can't be sure how it was done, and they're not sure they're going to catch the person, and they may never find out who it was, not a, not a, not a, not a, et cetera, et cetera. And because of the Flight 800 fuel motor accident, the omnibus, omnibus crime, uh, terrorism, terrorist crime package was passed in record time. Oh, we got to have it now. Now, after the fact, we now know, with the rest of the story and nonsense is generated, that they lied about Atlanta. We now know beyond a shadow of a doubt, because if we listen to our government agents, they're telling us that it was a fuel motor problem, so Flight 800 was not shot out of the sky. If that's the case, then the, omnibus, the passage of the omnibus crime package it was completely established upon a series of lies. Right. Which means, I am sure, that even as we speak, our senators and representatives are rushing back to Congress to uh, rescind the omnibus terrorist crime package because it's not long needed, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that's right, they're not. You're right. I guess I was confused again. You see, because wouldn't that actually make sense if now they find out that they were wrong? Then, of course, they would rescind this right tag fighter type legislation. Yeah, right. And I'm a Chinese jet pilot. <laughs> For that reason, we have to look askew or askance at what's going on right now. And again, Atlanta is the linchpin for what was the next series of events cascading towards Flight 800, which was out of the blue. I, it may not have been an intentional shooting shoot down. It was in the wrong place, right time. Fate is the hunter. Like the old black and white movie, Fate is the hunter. Playing in the wrong place, boom, he's taken out of the sky. Any excuse was good enough because the propaganda was generated through who? The press. They were told it would print by the government. Once it was plugged in, it was just like what took place just about the time of the, of the Oklahoma bombing. Remember, three to five days before the Oklahoma bombing, all of the anti-terrorism legislation had already been primed to be in motion. It was cued so that it could be set in place three to five days after the Oklahoma bombing on the track and finished. Fortunately, a lot of people started to step back and look at the big picture and ask the right questions. But again, only because some of the Patriot movement, part of the Patriot movement, dug in their heels, turned and kicked them in the nose. And it was a great risk, and it was required. If we'd all done it, do you realize how much more damage we would have done? Call, check and see if the private body parts are still attached, and make sure you hang on to them so they don't fall off. Okay? And then turn around and just beat the snot out of them next time. Any action that takes place, we don't apologize for. You don't try to acquiesce. That is the first mistake. That's what they're hoping for. That's the first chink in a piece of homogeneous armor. That's the first break in a piece of land. A little crack when you start forcing water into it, or a wooden wedge and break. It doesn't take that much. A simple wooden wedge is all too Most of it is cut, cut stone. I hope you understand that. First with a small crack. And then they should be. Break it open a little farther, put a dry piece of wood in there, and add water and make it smooth. The rest is not human nature. Well, we can make sure we can avoid that. But all of the other things were denied. I know we don't have as much time, but I still want to cover this. I'm going to start passing the thing around. And I'll tell you what. Um, what passes around will be fair. We'll take a look at them. And, and uh, they're all one package. The same, it's not the same pictures. Of course, there are no foreign troops in the United States. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> of course, these are not foreign troops in the United States. Well, they are at Fort Polk. It is the United States. And this time, there's 21 different countries represented instead of 14. This is Cooperative Nugget 97. No press coverage on it whatsoever. This is a little CNN blurb, you might recall. But what's interesting is my favorite, which we have on tape, of our illustrious uh, commander of Cooperative Nugget, uh, Major General Sheehan, when a podium much like this stood and said, it is because of operations like this that we can truly create a new world order. Not my words, his words, on tape. And not only that, but did we get these off something we take? No. It was done by the information service for the Department of Defense, and it was on their tape. <laughs> their release, not ours. They were very proud of this. Of course, there is no such thing as a new world order, except for the one he's talking about. But I still want to cover some certain passages in the background. And I'll tell you what. What passes around, be fair, we'll take a look at them, and, and uh, they're all one package. It's, the same, it's not the same pictures. Of course, there are no. 
Of course, there are no foreign troops in the United States. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> of course, these are not foreign troops in the United States. Well, they are at Fort Polk. It is the United States. And this time, there's 21 different countries represented instead of 14. This is Cooperative Nugget 97. No press coverage on it whatsoever. This is a little CNN blurb, as you might recall. Well, what's interesting is my favorite, which we have on tape, of our illustrious uh, commander of Cooperative Nugget, uh, Major General Sheehan, who in a podium much like this stood and said, it is because of operations like this that we can truly create a new world order. Mm. Not my words, his words, on tape. And not only that, but did we get these off something we take? No. It was done by the information service for the Department of Defense, and it was on their tape. <laughs> their release, not ours. They were very proud of this. Of course, there is no such thing as a new world order, except for the one he's talking about. <laughs> I'm a little confused about it. And I'm confused about a lot of things. Well, interestingly enough, this shows you that we have a larger contingent the one thing that they apparently modified with this exercise, last time they practiced house-to-house -house search and seizure, confiscation of firearms, vertical checkpoints, uh, seizure and control on the roads, roadblocks, etc., etc. However, one of our first questions is, it's really neat that you keep training these guys to go in the same building over and over again, which obviously hadn't been in the United States. You may come to, with ten people to the first door, but you're only going to go with six or five to the next one. That's right. Okay? That's right. Yeah. That was part of the scenario for this time around in 97. And that is on tape and available. But this, by the way, if you want information on this, on Cooperative Nugget, look at the top of the sheet. It will give you the website. These were all on computer. It can be accessed and put on disk. And these were copied by a friend of ours. I was given the disks instead of the photos this time, which is just as good because the quality is good enough with a color copier or a color printer. Do you have read the website? Uh, we, it will be passing around. You'll be able to see it. Can I get it by then? Uh, I don't have it. They've got it with them. Yeah. I'll tell you what, start handing the sheets back as you look at it. That way, we don't care if they're out. And we can pass them around. That's okay. Well, the reason I bring this up, and if, if after the program we can access the web, don't worry. We'll let you take a look at it. I'm not going to let away or anything. The reason I bring this up is that there is a tremendous amount of data. This is only one sliver. This is a small finger of what we have at the office that we have available, some of which we barely have enough time to go through properly, and we're going to have to spend more time on. That's why I said we need your help. The, the militia movement, the patriot movement, has many, many hands to make for life work. We're just not effectively using all of them the way that we should. What are the attachments to this, by the way? And Cooperative Nugget was not the only operation of its type. I want to get this in motion, too, but uh, other color photos. And again, I will say this, that we could go to the court of law. And I saw these photographs three months before the Oklahoma bombing. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. A little less than three months, actually, because we were in Tulsa at the time. And I'll explain, first of all, what you have here. I asked most people, what are they looking at? So most people are happy if you have seen these and have seen them in other publications. These were uh, color copies of original prints off the original negatives. These are not the only two pictures of their type. There were hundreds of photographs taken with each flyover. This particular site, just to walk you through it, is a demolition site, right? A demolition practice site or just a range site. You'll notice we have, I asked everybody what this is, this is a chicken coop. No, it's an armored grandstand with Kevlar and ballistic Lexan in front of it. You have what is a laboratory site off to the side. You have an FBI ATF uh, mobile command post in the picture. You have a rider truck. Oh, did I say that? You have a rider truck. <laughs> And other devices. That's one photograph. That's right. Don't get too close. Well, here's what's interesting. This is more important. Photo. What's in the middle of it? And it's the same size. And we've got the serial numbers almost off it. They're working on that still, but what I understand. We talked to the guys here a couple weeks ago. Anyway, this was a Camp Gruber in Oklahoma, approximately 16 to 18 miles from Oklahoma City. It was this site was, was a portable site, Camp Gruber. This is a very remote area of Camp Gruber. It's a, it was a Class D facility. We believe it's been upgraded to a Class B. Uh, you'll notice features which identify where it is. And, well, trust me, there are photographs that show the whole area from a higher elevation, so you can tell exactly where this is located beyond the shadow of an elephant. And I'll explain in a minute who took these pictures. The site shows a compound with a 12-foot privacy fence. They didn't think that was enough, so they put four more individual privacy fences inside that. This site was active from the middle of the fall of 1994 
through to uh, February 28th of 1995, only shortly before the bombing. You have a series of military vehicles, you have five uh, military uh, GP medium tents, four maintenance tents, which are obviously make up a little factory, hint, hint, and then a compound area beyond that. These photographs, as you take a look at them, I will also make another statement here, have been given to uh, at least one state representative who two months ago sent them to the Department of Defense who has still not sent a response. And I don't think we're going to get one, just like they did about the February 25th date. Now, anybody here ever been in the military? How many raise your hands? Okay, does anybody remember what the color for training ordinance is? Yeah, Well, blue, later on, was changed to blue, modern blue. OD green for training ordinance, munitions, explosives. This, it's interesting because I had to ask myself when I looked at this originally here, again, not too long ago, so we were still trying to figure out why would they put blue tarps on airtight, watertight, sealed military vehicles. Then, I had to think back for a minute. Remember, training colors. If you're creating bombs, you want to make sure that the device is properly marked. What you have here is a Humvee, and several of them, but you have a Humvee, a cut the ambulance, you also have a trailer, the next size up from the Cuckby Ambulance, which is about the size of the standard GMC truck or Dodge truck with a camper on it. Oops. You then have the rider truck, and then you go to the next size, which is a trailer. Note there's another target that's right in between the two that was not in the uh, operation area for assembly. My attitude on what this is, first of all, this was all brand new, made from scratch. You can see the power source, you can see what is a pro power arrangement, and all kinds of other fun stuff here. I'll explain what that is in a moment. Everybody remembers what they said, in order to use ammonia nitrate, you have to make sure it's drier, cleaner, happier, fancier. And you have to use a special process. Well, you won't recognize this this way, but if you go by a chemical plant, and you notice the towers that are elevated like this, that's a portable prill tower that's on trailer. <coughs> now, there's a whole bunch of other details here, but my favorite is the guy right here, he's, I'll realize that he's being photographed. He's wearing blue pants, a black t-shirt. Everybody understands black does not reflect light. He has what is a gold crest, which is probably a Treasury or FBI or ATF seal right here on the left breast. And you can even see it in this quality of photograph. Now, they got caught on the ground on this one probably by accident. This guy's actually in other shots is trying to get away and get under cover in the progressive shots after this one's taken. I'll go ahead and pass this around to the of my memory. For February 28th on, this site was completely vacated. It was emptied of all of what you see there, except for the outside fence. Even the internal security fences were disposed of. First of all, most people say, well, anybody can take a picture. Well, very true. But we saw these photographs before Oklahoma, and the first thing they asked us was, what is this? Three of the people who took the photos were state highway patrolmen from the from Oklahoma. Two of them were county sheriff's deputies, and the others were local police officers. They utilized a variety of different aircraft and resuscitating different sites for unusual activity around the state. Strangely enough, they came across this, photographed it, and came back and photographed it many times. The only thing that changed is that the compound, and that is a compound, because those are animals that are killing Americans, probably, <laughs> we don't call that. We're using some, some supposition here. Uh, when, the, when the compound was sealed, a guard check was put inside guarding an empty facility. It was put with a set up with a 24-hour guard number. Later on in the season, the next year, that entire inside court area was a lush green. Everybody remember what ammonia nitrate is? And what most nitrates used in explosives are? Chicken uh, And those photographs are all available too. I wanted to touch on that because this is an important benchmark with regard to, again, some of the information that is available and has been available and people made the effort to collect. It has gotten out, and the most important thing, and the guys who took these pictures were pressured to surrender the negatives so somebody could work with them. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't surrender the negatives. This is the best way to pass on photographs I can think of. Go to a Kinko's or whatever color copying place you got and crank them, them out and shoot them to the wind. That way somebody has a copy and somebody has reference status so they know what's going on. But if you take a look at it, it's interesting what you got there, in my opinion. They were training everybody on how to make them. They had what was basically a classroom in the GP tent. Then in the larger cylinder tent you see, they were shown how to make them, and the trucks were there to make them. And that truck is, of course, the right size and shape for the storyline and the fictional nonsense that they put together in Oklahoma. There's a lot of other stuff that's come out since. That was all taken before February 28th. February 28th and before is when these pictures were taken. 
Shortly before the Oklahoma bomb, Charles Steve had the evidence. All those that those pictures were all in their hands. That information was in their hands too. And the problem is that the good point, unfortunately, the grand jury, the people's grand jury, is what it should have been. Uh, they did not fire, and they did not get rid of the very man who fought and stepped the way for that grand jury to take place. And so it's been taken over by the government again. Whereas the prosecuting attorney should work for the grand jury, instead, these individuals with the prosecuting office have virtually manipulated the grand jury a second time. And they're deflecting the information, nothing else. But the effort was made. And again, do not be discouraged by that because we have to make the effort. We have a clean conscience. We have done all that we can. You will not see it reported unless we report it ourselves in the Patriot Movement. So when they try to claim that, ah, these guys are hotheads, and they don't do this, they don't do that, well, you know, of course what you say. Very quickly, a couple of things were handed off to me by our, our friend George. One of them is, Guard helps Latvia develop mil uh, military. Now, there are no foreign troops in America again. First of all, keep that in mind. But it might be noted that uh, the Chief of the National Guard Bureau asked the Michigan National Guard to participate in this project as of 1992, partially because of the large Latvian population in Michigan. So in other words, when you bring foreign troops, what this is admitting to is when you bring foreign troops into the country, you identify the population group in an area through the ethnic surveys that have been done through the population census, and you can implant foreign nationals where you need to at their discretion. And they use those census numbers to get the job done. It's proper intelligence. But it's interesting to note, remember, there were no foreign troops in, in Michigan except since 1992. But guys, this is 1997. That's five years where they absolutely positively deny it. You're going to find this more and more that after the fact, little bits and pieces are going to start coming out that are going to backdate everything we've been talking about. And this is just a small fingernail cooking. By the way, another point. We have so many things we can cover because we're behind the times here a little bit. Uh, everybody remembers it's the anniversary of Roswell, right? Yes. The Zillions. Okay. <laughs> the border back. Well, did everybody notice when they did all the coverage of the Borger back down there in uh, Roswell that nobody did any live footage of the air base? Did you notice that normally whenever they go to the air base, they always come out there and they take the pictures? This is the hangar where it all happened. Right here, that building, that empty building with nothing in it is where it happened, which is okay. But they can't do that now. There's a reason. The local office is there. The entire base is occupied by the Luftwaffe. We've got a past stack of pictures, and I've got all the negatives about that deep, right there, about seven inches, showing all of the tens of thousands of troops that came in. The reason they didn't want, they wanted to concentrate on those museums in Roswell is because they didn't want to go down the street and show you the real aliens that truly exist that are, you know, touchy-feely flesh and blood. And that's the Germans that are there along with other foreign troops. Case in point, seven specific bases alone have been handed over to Luftwaffe in the last two years. Now, I'm a little confused again because wouldn't I rather have Americans on those bases and wouldn't I rather keep our forces intact and functional and operational? In fact, you get four times your bang for the buck if you make more National Guard and Reserve units so that you can bolster our capability to continue to maintain proficiency and training. And when the time comes, it doesn't take as long to remobilize your forces in the event you go into a global war like with China, which they keep hinting at. Oops. Now here again, shades of 1939 and 1940 all over again, because we all know what's happened in Australia when the, uh, well, of course this wasn't happening either. There's no gun confiscation taking place in Australia, except for the big piles of guns you're now seeing in the scrapyards. Again, it's not happening, it's not happening, go back to sleep, go back to all, well, people will get us, sorry. And this is all stuff that's, again, it was happening, it was being discussed, and key people were told to buy them time. And there are people even in the paper who go, oh, no, nothing like that could be happening. Sorry, kids, now it's been in Time Magazine. It's even in uh, the New York Times. They have this one picture showing literally mountains of the weapons that they're presently chopping up and cutting up and destroying the rest of the way. And it is reality. It has happened. The problem is this. There's only 32,000 military people in uh, Australia's Army and Navy oops, and Air Force. They're now virtually gutted. They also destroyed most of their strategic weapon or uh, strategic reserve rifles, both the F and FALs, or the all one ones, as they call them. And these rifles have uh, were, the, were the backbone of what they were going to rearm troops with. They now have 31,000 rifles for 32,800 troops. We haven't seen this since just before World War II when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor 
And Americans, and I know right here in Michigan, went down to Australia and were issued whatever the Australians had in the way of 22 caliber rifles, muzzle loading shotguns, anything else they could get their hands on because there weren't enough weapons to go around for the Australian military and they weren't going to give them to the U.S. troops. So they gave them the hand-me-downs. We're right back to being set up yet again. And China has received the industry, they've received the resources. Oh, and a lot of American bases too, by the way. We all know about uh, Long Beach, right? How many people here are familiar with the Long Beach story? For uh, those of you who are not up to speed on that, that has continued. It got coverage, we focused on it, people drew attention to it, and now it's business as usual. There is an excellent tape that was done here about three months ago showing the John Paul Jones at the Long Beach Naval Station. There is a central mast. And off the main mast, there is an American flag flying on one half of the ship. And on the other side of the mast, there is now a communist Chinese flag flying an equal station on a U.S. fighting ship. And that is videotape and photographed. Well, whoever did it in order, the officer in charge knows better, too. That is a direct contradiction to anything that he swore allegiance to. Another case in point. Of course, we all know that the $100 bills have changed, right? Well, a $50 bill. And have you noticed something about these people on the new currency? They never smile. With good reason. Now look at, you know, useless Grant. I'm sorry, Ulysses. They call him useless after the war for another reason, because the banksters got hold of him. But if you'll notice, if you look at this picture, he ain't smiling at all. He had a little grimace before, but now it looks like, oh my God, here they come. Now, I haven't seen it yet, but if you recall, in the new currency, which of course doesn't exist, none of this is happening, this is not taking place. <laughs> this is not taking place currency. You have a water shit area over here. Now, if you have the new $100 peso, or the new 100 pesos, as we call them, the new 100 pesos, when you hold them up to the light, you can see a face in that water shit area. Go to the bank and get one and have a lot of fun. Ask people who it is. It looks like a demon or death mask of Ben Franklin. How many people have seen that? So a few of you have. Take the time to do it. Yeah, all six China. Yeah, the face is all puffed up. The eyes are squinted shut. So God only knows what this guy looks like that's in this water ship this time with a beard. I'd be fascinated to see how this turns out. But again, this is a warning and a release. And oh, by the way, your currency is not being devalued. Oh, really? I brought this up the other day. How much were you paying for a pound of chicken last year? I was paying 49 cents a pound. I could get it for 39 cents or even 29 cents an hour down. Right. 79 cents to 89 cents for the same pound of chicken from the same place. They haven't changed the carrier. They haven't changed the, well, they haven't changed who they shop with per se. But we all know that they're kind of getting rid of the competition, aren't they, in the meat industry? Yeah, Tyson inflation. There we go. <laughs> exactly. That's it. The point is that Remember the basic rule of inflation. And a lot of you people are familiar with uh, how this money system is supposed to work as opposed to the way it does work right now. It's not that it takes more money to get something. It's that you get, you get less for the paper currency that's generated. In other words, this there is taking more of these nonsense bills as the as the toilet flush is developing, and you're seeing everything hyper accelerate in terms of costing it. Example, somebody I've had a lot of people, if I haven't heard this once, I've heard this twenty times in the last two weeks. Automotive parts. Automotive Automotive parts have been going right through the ceiling for a reason. The competition is being eliminated. When there was competition, when the American system was in place, for the most part. It wasn't that difficult to maintain or keep the prices of a competitive edge. That's all gone now. Another interesting thing is in the electrical industry. Some I mean, people might be electricians. At our end, we're now getting the first big flood of the NAFTA parts that came in because all the American stuff is being used up. Anybody who knows what a, golf, what a ground fault plug is right now coming out of the box, the ones you use the bathroom so you don't electrocute yourself, most people will get them nowadays. Four out of five, if not five out of five, out of the box are junk. <laughs> Four out of five and five out of five. Not working at all. Yeah, and what's cute is it's a lot of our name brands still. It's just now they're being made south of the border or outside the United States, and there are no standards. And here's the sad part. The lowest standards America had are higher than the best they're making outside. The lowest standards. So we're not going to move. This is progressively, again, an illustration of getting the shaft through with NAFTA and the old gap to the head. We talked about it many times. And again, uh, oh, by the way, with regard to NAFTA, remember, 
With our borders open, we aren't going to have a drug problem, are we? Except for the semi-truck loads of cocaine going to New York. How many people caught this story? We, of course, now we had, and we covered this extensively on, on Republic Radio with the, with the program. We have this one young man down on the border of Texas who was shot. As a, he's a goat herder. He was shot after school by four Marines who could see him just as plain as I'm looking at this man right here. So there was no doubt it was murder. But here they are worried about it. they got these guys out here guarding the border from some camp casino with a backpack. And I want to do this as a cartoon or as a tape. Because meanwhile, in the interstate, right behind them by about a mile, what they had happen, what was really cute, is they had three semi-trucks full of money loaded with cocaine, and they went all the way to New York, and nobody stopped them at the border at all. Yeah. Even 60 Minutes finally did this piece that we all talked about, what, two or three years ago. And before NAFTA was passed, even, we said, here's how it's going to work. Here's what's going to happen. What did they say? And those crazy patriots, they even think that something like this could happen with NAFTA. Oh, they're just crazy. Then we ask those same people who say you're crazy, did you ever read the Gavin Reaper and Well, it's 22,000 pages. I couldn't read that. Cha-ching. What does that tell you? Well, what's cute is this whole scenario, the way it worked out. And while everybody was shooting these guys, worried about this camp casino with his backpack full of dope, which this young man was not. While they were worried about him, they had a route set up which was going up into the perimeter states through NAFTA where they were then exchanging the trailers and bringing them up to Battle Creek and up to Michigan and also to Chicago and then shuttling across and over to New York. Well, Shazam, Sergeant Hearn, doesn't take a rocket scientist. They were using carrot loads, they were using uh, plywood, hollowed out the center uh, pallets of plywood, and everything else coming from across the border. You can imagine the stuff the drums in by the truckload. They had a warehouse as big as two of these buildings they were using. And it was half full with trucks full of stuff. Now, what does that tell you? And again, nobody checked them at the border. Why? The open border policies. So the hell with this nonsense of the war on drugs. Interesting sub-point yet again. I know, I've got to go get two minutes. Got to get this up. All of a sudden, if you notice, they had this little thing in last week's Time Magazine about this billionaire who says he's going to spend millions of dollars to fight the war on drugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you want to know why? Because all of a sudden, no, I don't doubt that. Because, again, the enemy always creates its own opportunity. If you can't get people more motivated, it buys the resources itself. Well, what they did, what they're going to do is if they got too close to the, the mafia in New York. Between the kosher mafia and the other mafias involved, what happened is, oh, boy. Now they're, they're going to grab our backyard. If they can grab those cocaine dealers, they might go after the real cocaine dealers and the real drug dealers. No, they can't have that. So now the war on drugs is going to be bad. But only to a certain degree, and only in certain areas, and only for certain people. For the rest of us, it will be the tool used arbitrarily to attack the American people like all the other devices that have been created. we only got a few, minutes, a few moments left here. And uh, we've got to make sure they've got announcements still before the end of them, before we get out of here, too. But for all of you who are listening, if you don't know, we're on Galaxy 7, Transponder 14, Frequency 7.71. That's Galaxy 7, Transponder 14, Frequency 7.71. <coughs> and if you get an old satellite system, don't tell me you can't find one. Go off Michigan Ave, out beyond the Ypsilanti, and there's hundreds of them you can get for free along the road. <coughs> and if you've got wires draped over it, go stop and ask you know, they'll probably pay you to haul it away. You hook up the dish, you look up a simple satellite system, you can be listening to the entire public radio network like we're sitting in this room together. That's how clear it is. In fact, we have companies, this is a, uh, this is a, this is a great plus for demonstration. There are people that when, when John started working on this, and the other guys were involved all with it, that they actually came to the public radio and wanted their program refiltered through our system. That's how well we were doing it, and how clear our signal is. So we've done pretty good work there. Anyway. We're going to close. We can talk after. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is there anything with these cameras on the highway? And are they going out across the nation? Highway? They're all over the nation. I have pictures of the cameras. Questions about cameras across the highway, across the, the highways in Michigan. You are simply about a year behind the times what we saw in California and Florida. We tried to tell everybody off about in the last three years. What well, this is part of is the electronic highway. WJR, they did a piece talking about a combination of the Lucid system and the Gen 3 shut down and computer control circuits on board cars. When we were here five years ago, they uncategorically denied that that technology even existed. But listen to what I just said, the Generation 3 technology. They've already gone through two other systems, and this is the latest, which literally they can shut cars down, they can turn the cars on and off at discretion, and it all can be done through the satellite system, and it's done right out of Detroit. Can you talk about that just like this? 
a little bit. They touched him on it, but again, they can't they can only get so close when they're told back on. Right. So again, this is I've got photographs from California, from Virginia, from Pennsylvania, from Florida, Louisiana, every state. We call we call Atlanta, by the way, Orwell Bill. Now, I'm going to close with this one because I want you now to get a picture of this. Before the Olympics, we were on the I-75 coming north. And there's this pole. And you know that in Atlanta, there's a place called Freedom Street. That's its actual name. Where you come off the ramp and there were three cameras on a pole. And it says Freedom Street with that little, the little sign. And beyond it was another pole with two more cameras. The only thing it needed was a guy in a black uniform with a ski mask. And what a beautiful shot that would be. <laughs> Freedom Street. Where everything is photographed. One city out of seven that originally received the cameras down in Atlanta kicked it off. Or it took them off. That's right. Freedom of Slavery. George Orwell, 1984. Well, thank you, Mike. As always, together. God bless the Republic. Get to the new world order. We shall prevail. Thank you. I know we're officially done now, but real quick, before we go, I. I mentioned this before, I'll mention it again. If you can get a copy of this, this is a college text as far as I'm concerned for teaching people. I'm using this at the U of M. It's called The Factual Guide to the Constitution for the United States of America. There's an address in the front. Come up here if you want to write it down. Well, it's an excellent uh, working book. I give this to people. It's, it's, it's beyond, it's the next step beyond the pocket constitution. So if you want to, you should order a copy of this. I think it costs around $15. The normal person is doing it now. For my country, for the pain that it's been through, she's been made to suffer for the profit of a few. Storm clouds are our forming. Winds of change now touch our shores I hear forefathers are crying As the dreams been crude